Hey, this is Nicole Kelly, host of Loud and Proud. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Liz Colburn, host of the Morning Uplift and Motivational Mantras here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come over and check out my shows, The Morning Uplift and The Motivational Mantras. The Morning Uplift airs on Monday mornings every single week, and it's a show that really tries to help start your morning with the motivation that you need to get through your week. The Motivational Mantras has a guest speaker on every other week, which shines light on their life story and helps us to find the beauty in our journey. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of the Morning Uplift and Motivational Mantras. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Fantasy Wizards. I'm Scott Wisniewski. I'm flying solo, at least for now. Kevin Wells on assignment, my normal Thursday co-host. So we're going to try to get through some questions, some lineup questions out there, some burning questions fantasy-wise about this week's games. I want to thank everybody again. Public House Media continues to grow and grow, and we certainly appreciate everybody who's watched, who's downloaded, who's uh, been interested in all of the shows on the network, and particularly uh, Fantasy Wizards Tuesdays at 7, Thursdays at 6.30. Let's kind of jump into some... Some news and notes. This is the last week of bye weeks, so uh, that should make a lot of people happy. When the schedule first came out, this was supposed to be a bye week for Tampa Bay and Miami as well. But as you know, because of some weather-related issues, they ended up uh, having their bye week in week one, the dreaded week one bye, so to speak. It's only four teams on bye this week, the Jets, the Colts, the 49ers, and the Carolina Panthers. That means... Obviously, no Cam Newton, no Christian McCaffrey. Those are two of the bigger players. Uh, uh, Funches for Carolina. For the Niners, no Carlos Hyde. Uh, for the Colts, no T.Y. Hilton, no Jacoby Brissett. And, of course, for the Jets, you're missing Forte and you're missing Belial Powell um, and some of the other receivers who have some surprising good years in Curse and, and Anderson. But we will talk about who you should. Looking at the start, answer some questions for you, some lineup-related questions. Uh, ruled out for this week already. Again, Jameis Winston will miss his second game. Tyrod Taylor has been benched. So hopefully if you were looking to start the Buffalo quarterback, you've made other arrangements. Um, Devontae Freeman, doubtful. Will Fuller, doubtful. The receiver with Houston, uh, unlikely to play. Aaron Jones, out three to six weeks. The Green Bay Packers running back. Ty Montgomery, the other Green Bay Packer running back, unlikely to play this week. And Jordan Reed, seemingly questionable every week. I don't know if he, we'll find out maybe tomorrow if he's closer to playing or not. I'm hearing he might be. But again, we'll take all those reports with a grain of salt as it relates to Jordan Reed and his injury status from week to week. Um, to answer a couple of questions, these were some questions that were sent to me throughout uh, the last uh, maybe 12 hours. Um, some of these people I know, I play in fantasy leagues with or personal network. One of them I'm not sure if I know or not, but we'll kind of delve into it. One of the hot pickups this week uh, in a lot of my leagues, and as I've mentioned before, and I only say this not because it's a badge of honor, but just so you understand when I talk about looking across all my leagues, I play in seven uh, active competitive leagues, and uh, Rex Burkhead was one of the top pickups in just about every one of those leagues. So Chad has a question. He's looking for a running back. His two choices are Rex Burkhead and Drake from Miami. It's an interesting question. Because you have two really interesting uh, similar scenarios in that Rex Burkhead's not getting the majority of the carries. Deion Lewis shares some of those. James White's the pass catcher. Uh, Mike Gillisey was a guy who was uh, been productive the first couple weeks of the season. Now he's basically been relegated to nothing. So when you look at it that way, you you ask yourself, well, you know, Burkhead's not all the carries, but neither is Drake. He's sharing it, the, the ball with Williams. Williams had more carries last week. Drake was far more productive. So if you're going to ask the question, Burkhead or Drake, um, I think you got to look at matchups. And the Raiders are the matchup for uh, um, 
the Patriots, Miami is a matchup uh, or matching up against Tampa Bay. I say because of the matchups, take Drake. Again, he could lose some carries to Williams, but Bill Belichick, very unpredictable the way he rotates his running back touches and things of that nature. So, Chad, I say Rex Burkhead's your guy. Um, Mike, another buddy of mine, uh, I actually know what his quandary is. So he thought he was set himself up in pretty good shape on draft day when he walked away with two really good veteran quarterbacks, ironically, uh, one who replaced the other one in San Diego. So he's got Phillip Rivers and Drew Brees. We kind of talked about this Tuesday. Drew Brees, for years, was a no-brain start every week. Brees was the guy. That offense has changed. It has evolved. And in some ways, Drew Brees' arm strength has devolved. they become a run-first offense. Drew Brees is a guy who, quite frankly, just doesn't throw the ball downfield. A lot of the, the passing yards have come uh, yards after the catch. But Rivers is banged up this week. So, you know, it, it makes for an interesting quandary. Uh, Washington is the opponent for Drew Brees. And even though they're a run first team, they are at home because they're at home. I would give the slight edge that. And like I said, the fact that um, Rivers is banged up a little bit and he's playing against the Bills. I'm going to say Drew Brees, but I, you know, the leash on, on him, as far as I'm concerned, as being an elite quarterback in fantasy has gotten really, really short. Tony's looking for a flex play. Tony has Alex Collins, Jarek McKinnon, and Demarius Thomas. So those are three really good choices. Now, a little bit of news that came out of Baltimore camp. Uh, Harbaugh, Coach Harbaugh there said, with West and eventually uh, within a week or two, Woodhead coming back, Alex Collins is still his featured back. He's got a really good matchup against the Green Bay Packers. Um, Jarek McKinnon's a guy who, has had some really good games with Minnesota, but he's sharing carries with Murray, and Murray has been prone to have the bigger game from time to time. And Demarius Thomas used to be a stud receiver who's still very, very talented, just doesn't have a whole uh, a lot of, of quarterback, so to speak, throwing to him, um, you know, with Osweiler. I, I think I would lean towards Alex Collins. I do like the matchup a lot. So I, I think Alex Collins is your guy there, Tony. And Pete had a question. He needs two receivers out of these three. Golden Tate, Des Bryant, or Sterling Shepard. A Golden Tate has Chicago this week. Um, that should be a huge matchup for him. Uh, Sterling Shepard's become a beast. He was back two weeks ago. Had in return last week was a beast against the Niners. And Des Bryant, again, you know, the last two years, while his numbers haven't been bad, his – Chemistry just hasn't been there uh, with Prescott, with Dak Prescott. So I would say this week, just because of the matchups, I'd say Golden Tate and Sterling Shepard. Those are your two wide receivers. There's also a big Thursday night game. Um, actually, some of the Thursday night games have been better this year. I, I, I know I've for years kind of railed against the Thursday night matchup. Uh, Tennessee, Pittsburgh, uh, two teams and First in their divisions, respective divisions. But the Titans have – I failed to take that next step as far as an offensive juggernaut. You know, they had put some pieces together last year, and they surprised some people. And Mariota looked like he was, you know, taking that next step forward. And this year, it just hasn't been the same. Maybe the injury has just been nagging. He didn't take enough time to rest it because his team needed him out on the field. Um, but it should be an interesting game. Um, you know, Thursday night games usually, although there have been a few exceptions this year, usually tend to be low-scoring games just because of the short week of rest and things of that nature. So a couple of questions that Kevin and I usually bounce back. Now, Kevin's not here. Kevin Wells, my normal partner on assignment, had something come up last minute. So I'm flying solo, so it's going to feel weird that I'm asking some of these questions that we'd be bouncing off each other. But I try to answer some of those over under for tonight's game, Antonio Brown, seven catches. That's the over under. Um, that's a lot. That's a high over under number. I'm going to say the over. I think uh, this could be one of those nine catch days for Antonio Brown. Um, and obviously, it wouldn't matter if he had five catches. He's an every week starter. That's never in question. Uh, over under for Marcus Mariota, 240 yards passing. You know, I'm going to say under. I think uh, 220, 225 looks to be where he's going to be in his wheelhouse. Another over-under question. Le'Veon Bell, 125 total yards over-under. Um, I'm going to say 
over if you count some of the receiving yards he might have. And then lastly, for this game, over under Derrick Henry, 55 yards. That's a good one because I don't know. I think I've shared this this with a lot of the viewers out there. I have in one league Derrick Henry and in one league I have Murray, and I always seem to sit one and start one, and it's usually the wrong ones on any given week for any given team. In fact, last week I sat, I did, DeMarco Murray, and he had three touchdowns. So um, I'm going to say under for Henry. Yeah, I'm going to say under, but, you know, maybe 49 yards rushing as they split carries. If you have any questions, please feel free uh, right in the chat box. We'd love to hear from you, especially uh, so it doesn't feel like I'm just talking to myself or answering my own questions. A big game, a uh, big week of coming up this week. Again, you're three weeks away from the playoffs. Maybe your trade deadline has passed. If it hasn't, I'd love to help with any trade questions you have. Uh, again, Fantasy Wizards. I'm Scott Wisniewski here on Public House Media. Kevin Wells may or may not be joining us here a little bit later. Uh, but let's talk about the slate of games and, and some of the uh, uh, things that, from a fantasy standpoint, might impact you this week. So, uh, for example, uh, Detroit versus Chicago. Uh, there we go. Over, under uh, for Howard, the fine running back for Chicago. Uh, over, under 125 yards. If they're smart, over. I think the Bears should feed them and, and feed them well. That, that offense, passing wise, still just hasn't been able to click with the young Mitchell Trubisky. So I'm going to say over. Another over under question: Matt Stafford, three touchdowns over under. I say right there. I say it's a push. Three touchdowns this week, I think, for Matt Stafford. Um, a divisional matchup should be interesting. Detroit, two divisional matchups. They have this game, and then they have their home, of course, for Thanksgiving against the Vikings. And we'll be interesting to figure out what our what our schedule is going to look like uh, next week. Tuesday we'll have a regular scheduled show. We may see about doing a double show where we kind of talk about the Thursday games and maybe you know see if we can work out the triumvirate where Robert Gardner, my normal Tuesday partner, and Kevin Wells can join us and we can have a, a big show because I don't know that we'll be doing a show on Thanksgiving or at least not a live one. But anyway, some big games coming up for Detroit as they try to stay relevant in this division. Uh, Jacksonville versus Cleveland over under for Leonard Fournette, a hundred yards as a Fournette owner. I was frustrated by the lack of use of Leonard Fournette last week. I think Jacksonville learns their lesson from that. I think Fournette gets the ball carries just shy of a hundred. Let's say somewhere in the 90 yards and a touchdown uh, realm in that game, Baltimore, Green Bay, this, uh, this is one that everybody's waiting on, on bated breath. Uh, not really. It looks, it's shaping up to be a crummy game, but interesting over under question. Better play, Brent Hundley or Joe Flacco? Well, if you know anything about me and if you've watched any of these shows, you know how much I, uh, uh, how much I think, how little I think of Joe Flacco as an NFL quarterback. Let's just put it that way. Brent Humley hasn't been a world beater either, although he made some throws in the fourth quarter last week that made him look a little bit more like an NFL quarterback. I think overall the Packers still have a better receiving team. I think Flacco is a veteran. I think it's close, but I'm going to say Hunley. I think Hunley's a better play this week over uh, Joe Flacco. Uh, so there's uh, Buccaneers uh, versus the Dolphins. Better play, Doug Martin or Williams? Uh, Damian Williams, a running back. For, boy, Doug Martin's been bad. Man, has he been bad. Um, but Williams is in a straight timeshare situation. Boy, uh, I'm going to say Doug Williams, but I certainly don't feel good about that That bet. It's, it's, if it was like a confidence pool, one through 14 – of burning questions. That would be a one question. I say Martin, but I, I, I certainly wouldn't bet the house on it. The Rams play the Vikings in what, uh, if you looked at this game, when the schedules came out in the fall, you thought not much of it. This is actually going to be a fantastic game. Rams versus Vikings. Question is better play case Keenum or Jared Goff. Wow. Well, threw four touchdowns last week. So, 
That's uh, pretty good. Jared Goff, though, has been good as well. I think, you know what, Case Keenum. Because I think even if the Rams win, I think they might get more production out of their running game. I think Case Keenum has the better overall game. Uh, Over, under, question. Todd Gurley, 110 yards. Will he have more or less? I say over. I say he has a decent game, maybe 125 yards and a score. Redskins, Saints, better. We just kind of referenced him. Better play, Drew Brees or Kirk Cousins? Um, Cousins. I think Cousins has more yards than Brees this week. Um, I, I think that I think that Washington has to rely more on the pass than they have. Rob Kelly, I already he's out for the year. Um, Brees will they'll try to run the ball a little bit more. Cousins the better play this week. Uh, the other question coming out of that game over under for uh, Ingram a hundred yards. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to say over, but again. It, They've got two guys. Camaro's also running the ball very well. I think I could see 100 yards from Ingram. Chiefs take on the Giants. By the way, the Giants uh, helped San Francisco get their first win of the season last Sunday. So you can tell just where the Giants' heads are. Really interesting question. Better play Travis Kelsey or Evan Ingram? Well, Kelsey's one of the best in the game. Um one of the top three tight ends easily in the game. Ingram's had a really good year and has really been the most consistent uh, pass catcher for the Giants. I still go with the stud. I'm going to say Kelsey, but this one, it wouldn't surprise me. I think both of those tight ends are going to have good games. Um, and another question asked about that game, over, under, 100 total yards. Over, over. He's He's quieted down a little bit after starting out hot. Hopefully the bye week. Rested those legs, recharged the batteries. I think Kareem Hunt over a hundred total yards against the Giants. Uh, we're making our way through the the, the games here. A couple more, a uh, couple more games to talk about for Sunday. I'm Scott Wisniewski. It is Fantasy Wizards on Public House Media. Um, hopefully, you have had a chance to check out other programming on this network. It's really an amazing platform, and I can't say enough good things about the work and the commitment that the, the people who put the network together and the, the hosts of the shows and, and the, the, the people who have worked hard and done, you know, put the sweat equity in to help public house media continue to grow. And I am truly blessed and honored to be part of this. And, and we talk fantasy football and hopefully after the football season, stick around once a week and talk fantasy basketball, fantasy baseball, I play it all. Fantasy NASCAR. Uh, maybe we, maybe I won't bore you with that minutia. Let's move on. Cardinals, Texans. Better play Adrian Peterson or Lamar Miller. Adrian Peterson struggled Thursday, last Thursday against um, the Seattle Seahawks. Um, both both teams playing with backup quarterbacks. I'm going to say Lamar Miller. I, I think Miller is the guy. Uh, is going to have a better week because they're going to load up the box and try to stop Peterson and force Blaine Gabbert to try to beat them. Bills, Chargers. Now, interesting play here. We mentioned it um, at the top. Uh, one of the things we were talking about um, that uh, Tyrod Taylor has been uh, benched. So that means there's a new quarterback in town. His name is Nate Peterman. I don't know a lot about Nate Peterman, to be honest. Uh, that said, the question was posed to us, who's a better play, Melvin Gordon or LaShawn McCoy? Gordon's been a stud, but, you know, uh, lost some, some t- touchdowns last year, or last week to Austin Eckler. Um, I think Buffalo will run the ball more. That's what they're going to set out to do. Because of it, I think McCoy is a slightly better play than, than Gordon. Another question, better play Keenan Allen or Kelvin Benjamin? Hmm. Keenan Allen's another guy. Production was up, started to slide down a little bit. But Kelvin Benjamin now trying to figure out a chemistry with another new quarterback after he was just got one game with Tyrod Taylor. Keenan Allen, what the heck? Allen, slightly better play. Bengals, Broncos, better play. Mixon, Joe Mixon, or C.J. Anderson? 
well, I don't know if C.J. Anderson can be counted on for much anymore. Uh, so to be quite honest with you, their fantasy play in that game uh, would be Mixon. Another question, over, under, A.J. Green, 85 yards. I'm going to say over. I think A.J. Green will have a decent game. Last week it was Brandon LaFell stepping up out of uh, uh, after a quiet start to the season. But I, I think A.J. Green has a great game. A couple more games here for next week. Patriots, or this week, Patriots Raiders. Over, under for Carr, 250 yards. I'm going to say over. I, I think that teams have been able to get yards on the Patriots, even if they haven't scored a ton of points. So I, I'm going to go there. Uh, I'm going to say over 250. Better play Brandon Cooks or Amari Cooper. Hmm. I, I'm going to have to go back to what I just said. I mean, what what I had said earlier was that – um. I, I think you can't trust anything going on in New England, except there's two things you can trust. He's healthy. Gronkowski's a stud. Brady's a stud. And Martellus Bennett's a jackass, um, which has nothing to do with fantasy, by the way. That was some personal commentary. I'm going to say Cooper. Cooper is the better play. Eagles, Cowboys, uh, Alfred Morris, over under 75 yards. I'm going to say under. I think you start to see a little more Rod Smith in this game. Um, and, and it may eventually be the guy who is the starter till Elliott comes back and then is the number one backup behind Ezekiel Elliott. Um, better play Carson Wentz or Dak Prescott. Carson Wentz. I, I said a couple weeks ago I thought he was the first half MVP. Certainly one of the most surprising players. I think he's the guy to grab. And Monday night, Falcons, Seahawks, more passing yards, Matt Ryan or Russell Wilson. I'm going to say Russell Wilson. And also in that game, Freeman, as we mentioned, likely not to play. If you have Kevin Cole somewhere in, in one of your leagues, you should make sure he plays. By the way, this was breaking news that literally just happened. So Philip Rivers practiced today, still has not cleared concussion protocol, but he did practice, which would lead you to believe that he's getting closer to being cleared. If he ends up cleared, obviously he will start um, uh, against the, the Bills. So that's it. That's the, the preview of the upcoming, <coughs> excuse me, upcoming week. Hopefully, as I said, you get closer to the playoffs. Uh, you're you're getting yourself ready to go. Hopefully, if you're on the outside looking in when it comes to the playoffs, that you're able to go on out and either make some trades or go ahead. Here's a, a little bit of advice, and I've been I've followed it for quite some time. You should be checking the waiver wire every week, and I don't mean when I say checking, spend a couple minutes looking at players who are out on the waiver wire and not just players that are playing this week, but guys who might be on a bye or guys who might be injured but looking to come back sooner than later. And you should always be trying to turn over every week the bottom one or two players on your roster because you never know. You'd be surprised what people cut and what people put out on the waiver wire. I'm telling you, secret to success doesn't end with a good draft. A good draft gives you a good baseline, and obviously if you stay healthy, great. But you should always be looking at that waiver wire and trying to replace the bottom, you know, like bottom ten percent of your roster. To be quite honest with you, um, and trying to upgrade. So, uh, if you're trying to make the playoffs, maybe you're five and five, maybe you're four and six. You're in that that region where you could it could go either way. Be scouring that waiver wire, and if you're not in the playoff mix, you owe it to your league. You absolutely owe it to your league to continue to put out a lineup, to continue to try to win. Because one of the the pet peeves I've always had as a team starts the season, say they go one and five to start the season, but <clears throat> their one win came because they were putting out a good lineup and they were trying to win. And then all of a sudden they quit. They stop putting in the lineup. They have injured and bye week players in their lineup. And they give another team that you, that the team that they beat, uh, you know, they, they're competing with that team for a playoff spot. And here the team that started out one and five is now laying down and giving easy wins away. You didn't sign up for that. You didn't invest the time. You didn't invest the money. You didn't invest the knowledge and all of that stuff um, to just give up and quit. 
So if that's why you do it, then you know what? I, I'm not a the league commissioner is not inviting people back next year when they do stuff like that. So um, that is why you need to keep on checking the way we're wearing. My, my friend Dave Bopke said, yep, he learned that, uh, that this is true in fantasy baseball as well. A- absolutely, Dave. Um, you just got to keep on looking to turn over that roster and, and looking for the best available players. We've come to the end of another Fantasy Wizard show. Again, I can't tell you how much uh, of a blessing this is to be able to to talk about the, one, the, the passion I have for fantasy sports and, of course, this season, fantasy football. But, you know, again, fantasy basketball, fantasy baseball is like, like another passion of mine. But I want to thank, again, everybody at, uh, at Public House Media for everything they do, for all the great programs they put out there. For my partner who's on assignment and, and looking forward to seeing him back here after the holidays and Tuesday when we talk about doing the extended show. Um, Tuesday, of course, Robert Gardner will be joining as well uh, as usual, I should say. And, and hopefully we'll start getting you ready for not only what happened this week in fantasy, but what's going to happen with three games on Thursday. So, again, for Kevin Wallace, for Robert Gardner, for everybody else, I'm Scott Wisniewski. This is Fantasy Wizards on Public House Media. Good luck this week, everybody.